I, rem I remember that deduction day, and I, 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 it, it makes <laughs> it's really painful that that Sherlock scene to watch because I couldn't move my mouth. I was so cold. <laughs> I mean, it was absolutely freezing, and I was just kind of trying to speak faster. Can you do a bit faster? I, was like, I can't actually move my mouth. I've got. It was freezing. Our feet were freezing, and uh, yeah, it was. Um, it was one single take, despite the cutting to me picking the little clues out of his pockets and oh, costume. But yeah. And then you look at Patrick Melrose, another great Patrick role for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And this is from five novels, uh, Edward St. Aubin. Uh, Edward St. Aubin, yes. Yeah, and um, how integral was he to you in playing that role, your relationship with him to bring it to life? Because it is complex and interesting. It's alternately funny and harrowing. Yeah. It's about addictions. And uh, and this very promising man caught up in them. Uh, it, it's it's a fascinating series when it came on. Well, Teddy is an extraordinary human being. I mean, he wrote these five superlative novels, which are some of the finest prose you'll ever ever read in the English language. I mean, they are they're exquisite. Um, you get a character in a line, you get a, an entire relationship in a page, in a world, in a chapter, and it's just this incredibly honest um, in the sense that it's. It's, it's a lot from his personal experience. Um, a journey of this man from being an abused child into addiction and out the other side. And it's painful, it's very, very dark. It, it asks a lot, but it's also, it's, it's incredibly funny. It's searingly funny. And, and the two things allied and collide and inform one another as they do in life. The, the two masks of tragedy and comedy are, are, are right there in that material. And um, it's, um, it was a joy. It was a real passion project of mine. I, I got introduced to the books a while before I knew they were being made. And it's very rare that I actually say anything to the question, like, what do you want to do next? And what do you fancy doing? But it was a, it, there was a Reddit and there was also, um, I think, a fan convention that was at in Australia and I and I went, yeah, I, I really want to have a go at Hamlet and that got a cheer and I went, and also there are these books called, well, they're the Patrick Melrose novels, no, no, silence. <laughs> but word got back to um, the producers at the time who were already developing scripts. Um, with da I, Tanya Sagachin, where are you? Sorry to embarrass you. David Thank you, David Nichols, who wrote Starter for Ten as well. She's another neuron in the audience for me. <laughs> Much more than that, but thank you. <laughs> Round of applause for Tanya Sagachin, producer of The Power of the Dog, please. Thank you very much. All right. God, that was easy. What else can I get a few thousand people to do? <laughs> Let's do a conga around Santa Barbara. Yeah, we might do that later. <laughs> I'll have another couple of margaritas, and we'll do that at the end. Um, but... Um, so David Nichols, I mean, a, 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 a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful author and a brilliant screenplay writer and adapter. So um, it was a very potent combination. And then the brilliant Ed Berger, a wonderful director who directed all five episodes. He's just in stuff. Yes, absolutely. Two, his parents are here tonight. Um, but he is, he's very special, Ed. He's really, really brilliant. So and Jennifer Jason Lee was great in that. Incre also. And incredible. Was it was an extraordinary cast. You know, Pip Torrens and... Oh, gosh. Um, it was, yeah, it was quite something. It was quite something. And the way we, I, I kind of came on board wanting to play the role, and they were thrilled, but then I said, look, can we, can I help produce it as well? And, well, actually, Rachel, more than anybody, came to, uh, Rachel Horowitz, it was her and uh, Michael, her husband, who were producing it and already developed it with David. And, um, yeah, they, they said, yeah, we'd love you to, to help us with figuring that side of things out because we've commissioned stuff before and we've produced from that executive point of view but we've never been on the ground so yeah we put the team together we 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 put ed and james friend our amazing dop together and um and there it is it was a real passion project from beginning to end and teddy's a, a very dear friend as a result of it um which is a good result, I guess. I mean, he wouldn't be if it was an if it was an awful rendition of his superlative works. Um, so yeah, yeah, I'm very fond of that. Yeah, uh, it's if you haven't seen it, go check out that series because it's it's really something. Uh, and it got him his, I believe it was your sixth Emmy nomination at that point. I mean, losing track. You've won them. You've you <laughs> you know. I've won some. I've lost. I can't. I can't remember either. Which is. <laughs> really <embarrassing. laughs> But it was, yeah, it was, it was amazing to well, get that recognition. Well deserved. And from the other side of, of something like that, these blockbusters you keep finding to do, you know, from Star Trek into Darkness as Khan. 
Oh my God, you know, were you a Trekkie? Did you just want to be in a Star Trek? Like Whoopi Goldberg, you know, called them up. I, I'm just a Trek, I want to be in Star Trek. No, I wanted to be in Star Wars. <laughs> No, I got it, I got it all still wrong. still time, brother. I, I got it all wrong. I don't know, that shit might have sailed. Um, I, I kind of got it all wrong. No, but I mean, you know, with J.J. Abrams' calls, and uh, yeah, I, I, and I, I, I didn't know the lure of, of this. I, I used to, of course I used to watch the series, but I wasn't an ardent fan. I, I didn't have any kind of fan base knowledge. I, I, I wasn't an expert by any degree, but of course I knew what I was going into. I hadn't seen Ricardo Montalban, I hadn't seen his Khan, um, but then I, ju I, I, di I didn't even think about that, I just thought, I really want to work with JJ, he's a visionary, I love the first film, I thought it was so punchy and irreverent and knockabout and just <sighs> fresh, and that cast, that amazing, amazing cast, so yeah, I, I got the call, I, I did an audition on my iPhone and, and, and he thought it was alright. <laughs> It's a lot of physical training for that, too, right? That was the first time I kind of beefed up and did that kind of Hollywood actor thing where, you know, <laughs> then people come up to you and I, I, I always have this laugh with Paul Rudd and he comes, I remember the first time and he was, I think, it might have been a bit after this, but we, 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 we still joke about it. We go, hey, how are you? Hey, hey, oh, yeah, hey, oh. <laughs> Just like this sort of man slapping that goes on in Hollywood between men. You kind of slap each other's sort of there around the triceps and biceps. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> it's very weird. <laughs> um, so, yes, it was the first time doing that. And... Uh, eating a disgusting amount. And, um, yeah, it was fun. It was fun. I mean, I like... I like all, all my, I, I've, I've always been interested in marrying the body and the, the mind. I don't see the Cartesian, you know, duality thing at all. I, it is for me, it's all one. And so, any approach to character, however much it might be from both approaches, the inside and the outside, it's to get to a place where it's all contained in everything that you see and how whatever's inside comes out through that physical form. So, he's a He's a genetically engineered uh, warrior, so I had to I did I had to do some press ups. <laughs> it's that simple. Um, and you know, when going back to Stephen Hawking or to Patrick Melrose, you know, as a, as an addict, the sort of variations in in what's controlling his appetites, his needs, his his physicality was was constantly um, shifting. And then the aging of him, because it's a series that takes him over, you know, a good three four decades. Um, that, that all, yeah, it, I, I get a great kick out of that, I, and especially when you get to do that journey um, in one. But yeah, Khan was the first time I really, really hit the gym to get buff. Yeah. Well, and then you picked another one, another little movie, Peter Jackson, The Hobbit. Yes. Yeah. You know, Desolation of Smog. I mean, now this was CGI, and it's yeah. and we're gonna when we show this clip. I mean, you're gonna be riveted because we're watching you in the process of acting this role and then seeing how it turned out. But um, Which that I didn't need to do at all, by the way. Yeah, you didn't I didn't. Have no, he to, said right? he said it's no. a voiceover gig, and I said, but I really want to do. See, I want to do the, the thing with the thing, and move, I want to be with Andy Circus doing the you know. movement. That yeah, they didn't even think of themselves. No, and right? he was on a break. Andy was on a break. The king of but the king of all of that, I mean, just a genius physical actor. Well, genius actor, but a genius physical actor. He really initiated that art and, and mastered it, um, unlike any other, really. And I, he was on holiday. <laughs> he was having a break. So I was, I was there with Peter in, the, in, in New Zealand, and it was really also an excuse to get to New Zealand. I'd heard a lot about it from James McAvoy. Uh, we worked on Atonement together as well as Started for Ten, and we went walking when we were doing Atonement, and he said, you've got to get to New Zealand, buddy. You're going you're gonna, to... Uh, no Scottish accent this time, I promise. <laughs> you, you're going to love it. It's, it's whales on steroids. It's just it's extraordinary. And, um, and it is, and it was, and, and, and wet is there. So, you know, uh, in the middle of doing Star Trek, I went off to do what was supposed to be two weeks work and, and Peter didn't know what to do with me. After four days, I was sort of running the whole scene. He said, I think we got it. And I said, well, shouldn't I run the whole scene? Oh, the whole scene all, to, all, all together? Um, I will attempt a bad Kiwi accent. Um, 
And uh, I said, yeah, well, yeah. I mean, it's only about, what, it's five pages long? Well, sure, by all means, if you, if you want to do it, you can, you can do it, that's fine. And you don't need to, we, we've got what we need. And so I did it a couple of times, and, uh, and he sort of clapped lonely, and then the guys behind me also started clapping because they were a bit embarrassed, I think, all the guys on the, you know, on the keyboards watching my avatar doing things which were never going to end up in the movie. Bless him. <laughs> Um, I mean, it, invo it informed the vocal quality, I suppose, of the dragon a little bit. Um, but um, I think the people at Weta were very generous in publicity when they talked about, yes, Benedict's, I mean, it was my, his physical performance, and yes, it, we translated that into, into the dragon. It's like, no, you really fucking didn't. Um, <laughs> there's a, I, you know, that's a 400-year-old, you know, mile-long serpent breathing fire. There ain't no way, as you'll see, that I could do that, so feel free to laugh at it. But... At the same time, it was so, so amazingly liberating. I felt like a child again, literally, because it was just, there, was, there were no marks, there was no costume, there was no continuity, it was just play. It was just, yeah, guileless play, which so is what it should be. so amazing. Well, he's talking about it. Let's see what he's talking about. You're also right after this going to see a scene, just to remind you that he's a very serious Oscar-nominated actor. His first Oscar-nominated uh, performance in The Imitation Game, which is another great movie. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit, but uh, let's take a look at The uh, Hobbit right here. <laughs> 